John, why do you think that classical music and the American songbook persisted for so long as a mutually understood shared set of cultural touchstones for people of all classes? I ask because right now it seems that nothing endures. For young people, a five-year gap can be an unbreachable cultural chasm. Can you see any of the art created right now enduring for a century? Or are we in for a permanent, persistent revolution in culture that constantly discards the old for the new? <laughs> I think you're too pessimistic, Randolph. Is it Raymond or Randolph? I'm sleepy. Uh, let me, I think it's Randolph, but let me check. Mr. Carter. Carter. One thing that it's important to understand is that there was it's a mass- Randolph, excuse me, John. Randolph, yes. Randolph a massive proliferation of variety in popular music in particular in the 1940s as the result of various developments after World War II. So part of the hegemony that you're thinking about is that there was just less music available in the media to most people until that period, whatever was going on around you being played live. So all of America starts hearing country western starting in the late 40s. Before that, mostly you heard it in your neighborhood or in your town. And so there's just more music. I think it's exaggerated how much classical music really entered the hearts of most people back in the day. There was certainly a time in the 1920s through the 1960s up to about roughly the Kennedys where the larger culture made you at least pretend to like classical music or told you that you were supposed to. But I'm not sure how many people were really into Shostakovich during that time, even if you did see somebody come play the cello on a variety show. But these days, I wouldn't say that there isn't music happening that is going to be heard in 100 years. Is it classical music, depending on what you call it? Probably no more or less than ever. Classical music isn't going to die, but it's going to always be something that people tend to embrace more as they get a little older and a little richer and a little bit more patient. But try this. A hundred years from now, are people not going to be listening to Thriller? I think people will be dancing to those songs at weddings in a in hundred years from now because that is God's music. There's something that happened there. <laughs> the Beatles will continue to be heard. A lot of hip hop will be deathless. There will be a certain hip hop canon that will always be heard, starting from Rapper's Delight on through, you know, what Drake and people I've never heard of are doing now. I think it's it's still happening. It's just that there's a lot more to choose from. Taylor Swift, her appeal mystifies me. I don't I don't get it because I'm just too old and I don't like that kind of music, but the way that's being embraced now, those songs will exist or at least five or six of them in 100 years. That is that's my guess. Uh, I, you're, you're more pessimistic than I am about that. Well, John's the music expert. I'm going to leave him with the last you word. Know about music. Uh, well, I, I, I know jazz will be listened to in a hundred years. Uh, and I wonder whether ragtime is listened to today, a hundred years after it was in its heyday. Uh, very much. I don't think so. And I wonder if it's hip hop different from ragtime in that respect. I don't know. But yeah, you know, I listen jazz to a little bit of music. Yeah, there'll be a jazz canon that will live. It's not going away. It's going to tilt older in terms of where we are now. But people are not going to stop listening to Ellington or Coltrane. That's that's God's music. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. now let me ask you this: Is there anything about the intellectual heft of music? I, and I, I say this as a neophyte. I mean, there's something about the complexity, the elegance. Uh, the, the kind of musical virtuosity of a Mahler symphony or a, a Beethoven uh, or a, a Mozart a quartet or, or something when you listen to it and you hear how the melodies and the things, you know, and I'm not a musician, so I can't give, but there's depth. There's, there's a kind of, you know, intellectual depth in the music. I'm asking, really, I'm giving an observation. Likewise, I hear it in jazz. I'm, I mean, I hear... When these guys are, and they're almost all guys, are doing what they're doing uh, with the, the improvisational uh, musicality of it, instrumental virtuosity and intellectual depth. I, I it, it, you know, there, there's a kind of thing that's going on there that shows me an exquisite expression of the of the uh, intellectual achievement of the music. I keep using the word intellectual. I'm not sure exactly what I mean. 
but a kind of complexity. Uh, and and uh, there, there's something that's sublime that comes up out of that complexity and that virtuosity, uh, it seems to me, a person could try to say, uh, which makes this music timeless, not because it's popular, not because it makes me feel good when I hear it, but because it really touches the soul in some way through its exquisite elaboration of what human musicality can be. Again, I talk outside of my field, but I wonder how you react to that. That's, that's fascinating. I don't think that quality is what's going to be eternal because it sounds terrible to say this, but I don't think most people are listening for that intellectual quality. And so late Beethoven, that's always going to be a specialty taste. Late Ellington is always going to be a specialty taste. That thing that you're talking about with the complexity, with the overlapping, where you can tell that this is the musical equivalent of Kant. That is yeah. not what most people like. What that's most what people like, about. most human beings like, is infectiousness. And so that's why I'm thinking about Thriller. Or jazz that you like just because it's catchy, like Mingus or something like that, with that kind of hanging, shaggy quality of his. And then also the, the voice. Where people like virtuosity is less in the cello than singing the voice. And so opera will always live because you're listening to people doing that trick or the black female style of singing that's now become the way all pop women sing, that virtuosity will always last. I think that gets into people's guts. But instrumental virtuosity, that's going to always be a specialty taste, I think, because it doesn't connect as spontaneously with the soul as somebody singing, which is kind of a, an elevated way of talking. What an interesting question. Mm-hmm. 